Thank you so much to the people who brought future generations. Dr. Ron Paul is a former congressman. He's also our former libertarian presidential nominee. He inspired many of us to become libertarian and to join this party and continue his good work. We are extremely grateful that he has made it all the way out here to speak to us. I am extremely honored and humbled to present the great Dr. Ron Paul to you. a couple speeches in the past and one of the things that I talk to libertarian groups about is being active and having meetings and promote the cause but I said if you do get together one rule that I'm going to pass on to you is you should have a lot of fun doing it and it sounds like you are <laughs> But this is, this is just great, and Angela, I want to thank you very much for the introduction as well as uh, running this campaign and this convention. That's a job and a half. So, but it is uh, uh, wonderful to be here because there's a lot of enthusiasm here. I, I have one curious question I do want to ask. Most of you know that I was a nominee for the Libertarian Party 1988. But you don't, might not know that I signed up as a lifetime man, member and I paid in gold. <laughs> so, I am delighted to be here, and thank you very much for the invitation. I think really if I had a theme for what I want to talk about is the, the fact that the empire has ended. That's good news for us. <laughs> you know, one thing people have a controversy about is conspiracies. And I'm all for conspiracies, but I have one little thing to add. I only want to hear the true conspiracies, which most of them are true. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so important, you know, to uh, know what we believe in, and that's my emphasis. I often wonder, you know, when I went to the college campuses, and talked to a lot of individuals uh, during the presidential campaigns that uh, they, they would hear from me, you know, you'll probably hear a little bit of that from me tonight, and that is uh, the, the fact that uh, uh, there's a problem out there, a big problem out there, and it wasn't created by you, it was created by, guess what, politicians in Washington that need to be removed. I, I, I divide the op activities into two places. One is the philosophy that we have, and then the whole idea of uh, what's going on with politics. And there's t too often a division there. And uh, now the one thing is, if the competition, we should be doing a lot better than we're doing as libertarians when you think that the competition isn't all that smart. <laughs> I mean, you have a couple of what they call big, big parties, but do they have a philosophy? It's one thing we can say about libertarians. At least we have something to believe in, liberty. Yeah. 
You know, we have the philosophy that we seek and talk about, but we also have political activities. And uh, that, that to me is a contest between what the, what the people are thinking and saying and the, how do you change the government. And, uh, you know, there are some sinister groups out there that, you know, they want to change the government too, and they want chaos in the streets, and they're promoting all the nonsense, almost everything opposite of what we believe as libertarians, because the chaos is here. And that is what I'm saying. The, the empire really has ended, and it has been systematically replaced by the chaos for the sole purpose of improvising a system of government 100% opposite of libertarianism. And that we have to stop. You know, I, I wrote a little pamphlet recently and I dealt with the idea of the, this whole idea that the empire has ended and it's concluding that ending. And those individuals who wanted to philosophically believe, you know, the Marxists believe you have to destroy something in order to replace it with something good like socialism. So they purposely want that. They want the chaos of the street. Because I've had a dilemma over the years. Why are they people, the government, and the people going on with so many stupid things? And it finally dawned on me that's exactly what they want. And, and of course, that's what we, we have to change, but this is not new. It's happened throughout history, but instead of looking at that and crying about it and complaining about it, we try to explain it, but we want to make sure that we understand the value in it, too, and what we can do with it. That puts a greater burden of responsibility on us because they've destroyed you know, the remnant of what we had, that the founders had, with some emphasis on liberty. And now there's, you know, a vacuum out there. And they're planning on moving in. And when you look at wokeism, unfortunately, they've been pretty darn successful, a lot more so than they should be. And we should c confront the wokeism and get rid of it, is what I think we ought to do. But I happen to believe that uh, with this all got in full motion, you know, just within several decades. And that uh, it puts us back to 1963. I was a medical resident in 1962, and the Cuban crisis came up, and I got that little notice from the government, you know, and said, come along, we own you. You know, my claim is that the, the two things that will make you a slave is if you accept the military draft and the income tax. Because if you look at the income tax, they tax our income, and then they say, what do you mean? It's, it's not the government's. They have a monopoly on it because you can't spend any of it, you know, until the government gives you permission. And that is, of course, why high on the list ought to be, and I am sure it is in a crowd like this, that if we expect to ever see some significant changes toward liberty, we will be get, getting rid of the IRS, for sure. Of course, understanding the military draft is easy to see, especially if you remember or read the history of the 1960s. What a tragedy, but that's been going on ever since. We're still, we play these games, but we're still sending troops uh, to death by going overseas and participating and incorporating other people uh, you know, in, into the activities that we do. So this, this to me is a major, major thing. And you know, it's easy. We can visualize and we know exactly what we would do with the IRS and the income tax. But then there is another tax that has to be understood because the likelihood of us in the near future of getting rid of the IRS is, is not very good. But the fact that groups like this and others are growing in their understanding and their 
a de desire to do something about the tax that is the most vicious and uh, the most destructive, and that is the inflation tax designed by the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Convince you of that, did I? <laughs> you know, the, the, and I have a little book. Uh, it says, "And the Fed." You know, how to get rid of the Fed. But uh, I remember when it dawned on me what I should title the book, and uh, it uh, it occurred when I was at a liberal university, thinking that. Uh, and I had a decent crowd out, which was to my surprise, because we did pretty well getting a mixed crowd uh, out. And, and there was on college campuses, I think it was the University of Michigan, and we were talking my usual talk, and I, I alluded to without much emphasis, and all of a sudden, they were starting to be chants in this liberal university. They started chanting in the Fed. I said, where did they come from? <laughs> so. That, 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 that was a delight to know that that happened. But the, 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 in, the uh, t inflation tax is evil, really evil. It's a little harder to see the in income tax, but the in inflation tax is to finance all the, the deficits right now, and that is totally out of control. I mean, it is spending every single day, it's in increasing. We can't even hardly pay you know, get enough money to pay the interest on the debt. It's so bad. But that's part of the end of the empire. The end of the empire is coming and that is good, but we're not going to let those Marxists pick up the pieces. That will be our job to pick it up and give them a dose of liberty. <laughs> there are uh, some people who uh, talk about coups. There's been coups around, and the United States are the champions. We've committed more coups in the last 30 or 40 years than probably anybody in history. And uh, if, because if you look back, you know, even as recent as U Ukraine, that involved an American coup in NATO to simulate all that mess. But uh, they, they, there's a lot, lot of people that think that uh, 1963, uh, matter of fact, I think that it's very clear that there was a coup in 1963, and we're suffering from it ever since. <laughs> But I was, uh, I was a resident at the Henry Ford Hospital when I was drafted in uh, November, draft notice in November, and finally had to go in by, by, by January. But uh, th that, that was uh, an ex experience that uh, made, made a difference in my life because I, the, day, one, the, day before, the day, day before Kennedy was assassinated at uh, I was on Kelly Air Force Base, and Kennedy had stopped there, and I was a, uh, a flight medical officer on the base there. But uh, that had a big impact because it was like less than 24 hours as he left the base at Kelly, Kelly Air Force Base that he was killed in, in, uh, in Dallas. But, uh, but that wasn't the only thing, or the biggest thing. I mean, it was... It was just out of control. And then, as the history has evolved, and I've come to the conclusion, as many of you probably have, that over all these years, you know, the, the, the whole lie told about Oswald, the single shot business, that is, turns out, it's my opinion, it was a filthy lie. <laughs> But of course, that, uh, that was followed by another Kennedy being assassinated, uh, Martin Luther King being assassinated, and on and on it has gone. And 
the, the thing that really put it into my mind that this is a coup and it's been taken over was, you know, immediately after the John Kennedy assassination, it was all the plans made for, you know, an investigation. And they had the Kennedy Commission, I, I guess it was uh, uh, another name on that, but the, the, the commission was set up and it turns out that I've come, along, I've come around to believe that the key kingmaker of the coup was Alan Dulles. Yeah. But guess what? When they had the commission, he was on the commission to investigate it, to cover up the lies. You know, I've been, I've been convinced over the years of all the commissions, whether it's 9-11 commission or whatever, when you hear about commission, you say, good, at least they're investigating it. Now, it doesn't happen. It's either to cover up stupidity or, or you know, cover, cover up, you know, you know, their tracks because they, they're not seeking truth. And that's our problem in this country is the lack of truth. The lack of truth and knowing what's going on. And it is so bad that right now we're seeing the conclusion of this. The destruction of the Republic, the destruction of the Department of Justice, the destruction of our whole concept of the, uh, of the, uh, our, 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 our government, our Republic. It doesn't exist under these conditions. But I don't, I, I do not want myself to even drift to the eye and say, oh, how horrible, which it is. It's horrible, horrible, because it's so horrible. But I'm looking for something to grasp, and the grasp is they've destroyed it, yes, for the wrong reason. Their motives are evil, and they're going to use it unless this group of people and thousands more do something about it and replace it with liberty. You know, there's a lot, a lot of political activity. The various parties, uh, there's a, a, independence, and and we we work within a party. Uh, you know, the Libertarian Party. So, uh, but there are others that feel very frustrated, and I think they're sincere, but they're very confused. And one thing, it's a pet peeve with me, but I also think what they're doing isn't too smart, and that is, uh, that is, uh, they want the party of no labels. No labels, that means, that means you don't even know what it is. No, no labels. <laughs> you have to label something. So now the label is no labels. And I say no sense either. <laughs> They claim that this uh, satisfies the demand for, you know, uh, perfect democracy. Everybody gets to vote and everybody gets to participate. So they think it's a way to democracy. They advertise it as being bipartisan and bringing people together. And uh, this, this to me just isn't, isn't truth. But I don't believe they, uh, and they see this with honesty too, bringing people together. So if you have a, a reasonably or a good constitutional conservative, and you have a good progressive Democrat on on the other side, and uh, both of them have a piece of the understanding of the real message, and you say, well, how are we, we we need to bring them together, but they bring them together these two by the two parties giving up the true good beliefs and coming together with all this compromise and sellout. So I think one of the worst things I can see is, and there was something this week, oh yeah, we just passed this thing with a bipartisan vote. That's, that's bad news. <laughs> So I think, we, I think we should have labels, and I think we should have understanding, and I think it's just great that we have a philosophy uh, that is so wonderful, the philosophy of liberty. It's not something we invented. It's been around for a good while. Uh, a lot of confusion comes and goes. People have different opinions, but uh, you know, some of the basics uh, of this philosophy existed 
for a long, long time. Samaria, the country of Samaria, was the country supposed to have the, you, you, you know, the, the, uh, the, the first written laws in the, in, the, in the land. And even before that, people knew a couple basics. They didn't, th they had rules and punishment for people who would lie, cheat, and steal, and kill. That's a good one. <laughs> that sounds like non-aggression principle. So this has been going on for a long time. That's uh, four to 5,000 years ago, which means that there is, I believe, my personal belief is that there is a natural law and there's a higher law and it's, it's been available to all of us. We can understand it, and it has been. But there's a contest going on. It has gone on for years, hundreds of years, thousands of years. And that is there's always a people who are in denial for, for selfish, evil reasons because they say, oh, you can't know that. You can't know that. So, uh, <laughs> so the... Uh, uh, the evil, the evil there is 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 very very apparent. So uh, I I think it's easy for us to say what are we going to do to fill the void, and because I would say that each and every one here has a responsibility. And I've had people come up after after I've given talks, and there'll be some. Uh, some college students come up and they were motivated, and they would say, Dr. Paul, I heard that. That's a great message. I agree with you. What should I do? You know what my answer is? You probably have heard it. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> because I believe that despite the level of the amount of uh, uh, of education of people have, there's always some talent out there. Some people have musical talent, and I'm jealous because I wish I could sing, but I can't. So I sing the Song of Liberty, that's about the best I can do. <laughs> but everybody has talent, and it should be used in a different way. But if you come to the conclusion and you, if you come to a convention like this, you ought to leave with enthusiasm of understanding where the real problem is and that instead of looking at everything that's going on in a dire manner. See, I, I, went, uh, I, I was in Washington what, 26 years and they said, uh, how, how did... Uh, how did you stand it <laughs> with, with all those clowns out there? I said, well, I had low expectations. <laughs> and the expectations, you know, were uh, just re reality, you know. Uh, I worked, I, I was motivated to get into politics over the Federal Reserve and the money issue because that supplies the incentive to get involved in welfareism and warfareism and the whole work. So that to me was very important. So the, the whole issue of the monetary issue was a big thing. So I got, you know, involved in that. But I finally found out, to, as I studied more, is that it's all tied together. One time we were having a presidential debate and the host, uh, the, the uh, interviewer said, oh, this week we're gonna talk about economics. Next week, we're gonna talk about foreign policy. I said, they're the same. How do you think you fight wars without the Federal Reserve printing money? <laughs> But I do sincerely believe it is a battle between good and evil, and some people put that into a religious, uh, uh, spiritual view, but some people can do that in just good old logic that it's very, very natural uh, for some people to wake up and come across, just like the Sumerians did four or 5,000 years ago, that they knew the difference. You shouldn't lie, cheat, steal, or kill. That sounds libertarian. You know? <laughs> so people, people uh, you, know, you know, we should be able to, uh, you know, rely on natural law. But matter of fact, that is detested 
wholeheartedly by those authoritarians. If the authoritarians are competing with the people who believe in liberty, the authoritarians, they do not, do you know that authoritarians don't like you? <laughs> because, because you are a threat to them. And that's the way it is in Washington, D.C. That's why, one of the reasons you see so few. And uh, we do have the mess. I don't think, from my experience in Washington, I don't think that gradualism is going to all of a sudden give us a magic cure to what we have. That is, elect 10 more good guys, 10 more here and there, and we should. The more voices we have, the better. But that's not going to be the way the budget's going to get balanced. The budget is so out of control and there's so much misunderstanding and lies that go around they, they, that that can't happen. So are all the, you know, will, will the wars stop after my experience there? No, they're going to continue. They'll just lie more about it, be more deceitful about it. And if they say, if you oppose any wars, you're unpatriotic and uh, you're un-American and you hate the troops. And that ought to change because the attitude ought to be that when you're fighting for liberty, that you're credited with some good things that are happening, that, that is what we should be doing. You know, when I was uh, doing the uh, national campaigns, uh, I had a statement that would alarm some people at times because they, they want to know, why should we elect you? And I said, you should elect me because of the things I don't want to do. I, I don't want to run your life. I wouldn't know how anyway. It's all your business. And I said, I don't want to run the economy because it's impossible. You can't do it because there's different opinions. People might want to spend their money for something else. And I don't run, a, run the world because it's the dumbest idea in the world. And that's how you fight wars constantly. So we need... We need to get more people saying what they won't do and don't think we should do. But of course, the flip side of that is we want to protect your liberty. Oh, but the people say, you know, some sincere people will come and say, we, we like what you say, but uh, they're not going to take good care of themselves. They, they won't have any retirement or what sort. So that, that, that worries them. But, uh, you know, frequently on the college campuses, what I'd say, yeah, that, that is true, but what I want to do is, you're not going to have taxes, you're not going to regulate, your life is your own, and you know, that, that sounds very, very good. But I always tell them, and I got a lot of applause for it, and I said, and if you get your freedom back, and if you make a mistake, you can't go crying to the government and you can't get your neighbor to go to the government to get what you want. You have to be responsible for your activity. Well, the wonderful thing about uh, the, the principles of liberty is that they, they are so beneficial. It still bewilders me why we're not doing better. You know, we have to do better because uh, it is, it's so overwhelming that what they're doing, you know, you would think, and if you can't get enough, uh, if, you, if you're here in Texas and you can't be convinced of how bad things are, you could go visit a couple other states on what really is happening. You know, things are bad, but uh, they can always change. You could change, uh, and uh, people say, well, you, you, you know, it, it's not changeable. And like and my message here is, it's not going to change under today's condition. The bankruptcy is going to get worse and the chaos is going to be there. But we have to know, uh, you, know uh, you know, what the problems are and we'll be willing to admit it. You know, they say that the most dreaded enemy of those in big government is just somebody telling the truth. <laughs> We saw a little bit of that during COVID, the COVID fake epidemic. You know, what, there would be people, that was just an introduction to what they want, and they're already talking about the next virus, so be aware. 
So, but there were meetings held, PTA and school board meetings and all, and by that time, people were becoming irate and the groups would go, but all, it took one person sometimes to stand up and say, this is a lot of you know what, and we don't need to do this, and convert the whole audience because they were feeling the same thing. That's why one voice is very, very loud. <laughs> but I also make the point that you do, need a, you do need a large number. You need a prevailing attitude. Uh, about the people. Unfortunately for especially since the coup occurred, the attitude is that the welfareism and everything is, uh, is what we need and the things are going to be better. But that, that, will, not, that will not work. The coup, the coup has convinced the people that uh, they're right. But right now, it's obvious more and more people, I think that's sort of what's going on with the election, more people are relying, or realizing that uh, the lies have been told. And it is recognized that the one thing they can't stand in Washington is somebody that will just tell the plain truth. <laughs> But there are a lot of things that can be done, and like I say, every individual has a responsibility. And uh, I think people realizing that there's a contest between philosophy and also the people who tell lies, it, it, uh, it's, it's epidemic, there is no doubt about it. But I'm still convinced, though, that if people are exposed to the truth and know what's happening, the numbers of people, the percentage of people, are more on our side than on the side of tyranny. Let me tell you, but we must get the message out. You know, one of the things that we're having a tougher time with now is the destruction of the Department of Justice. That's a department of evil injustice. And <laughs> Can you imagine the FBI going, going to the Trump's hubs of where he lived and going in there and FBI was, was going in there ready to fight it out with Secret Service. I would say there's not much, there's not much left to a republic, you know, if that's the case. And uh, people don't even like before you use that word but they like to use democracy. But the democracy, we, the one thing I think we should work harder at, and I'm sure an audience like this already knows it, but democracy is nothing more than the dictatorship of the majority. <laughs> well, you know that, that, that is the whole thing. The dictatorship of the majority is so bad, and uh, how, why do we lose the argument against people who think they should have a fair shake? They're, they're in a minority, they're in a minority. All that happens, if you let that go, all they do is become victims, you know, and controls they have to have. Now we have to worry about DEI and ESG and all those rules and regulations. I thought there was one this week that should convince a lot of us, you know, that we should be very cautious about that. When uh, we saw, it have, I think it was in California, a medical school studied uh, this medical students that were appointed by, for diversity reasons, and half of them didn't know what they were doing. And they're, they're our medical students now. I would say get the government out of medicine, education, and the whole work. Well, that, that is wonderful, and I, you, you know, really get encouraged. People say, boy, it's hard work coming out there and talking to people like this. I say, I need to do it. I want to know you exist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do, and there are others. So continue to be more creative and get the groups together. I remember the first campaign was, I guess, in, uh, in 07, 08. 
Uh, the, the computer uh, just was started, and they came up with this thing, and I didn't know what it was. I still don't know a whole lot about it, but it was, uh, it was called a meetup group, so it was spontaneous. People met together in communities, and it was a perfect campaign, <laughs> you know, organization. You'd go to the meetup people, and if they happened to like you, they would just become part of the campaign. So that, that, there's so much now, and the technology is wonderful. Uh, I like the technology, but I have a strong warning. Technology is good when it's used by honest people, and it can be very, very dangerous when it's uh, run by the government. <laughs> Some, some people who are actually involved in some of the technology, they go to the government thinking they'll get credibility. And we have to talk to the SEC and, and to see, uh, see the, the, the whole work the, and, and talk to, to the people that are writing the regulations. And that's the way they will you know, have an influence. Well, the influence has to be, you people shouldn't exist. What we need to do is get rid of you and let the market decide who's gonna make it. Wonderful. I am going to close by thanking you. Thanking you very much for my invitation. Thank you very much because I get encouraged. That's why I come here. I come here because I'm very selfish, because I benefit by meeting you and talking with you and knowing that you want to end the Fed. Yeah.